eight times the size of Griffin. <laughs> yeah. What? How, how much does she weigh? Uh, fifteen pounds. Fifteen pounds. The Leo is one hundred and fifty. Oh. So that'd be ten times more, right? Of course. <laughs> We got to get Anubis here, Aaron. We got to bring Anubis for a video. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more. There we go. There we go. We'll give it a couple more minutes, guys. I think it's lagging again. Yesterday we had way more people. Wow, was that? Yes, wow, was indeed. Just calm down so much. She knows she's on camera. We're sideways. What? Really? Are we sideways on? Hey, yeah, yeah. Are we sideways on Aaron's screen too? All right. Question to everyone: Are we sideways or are we right side up? Because this could have been like this the whole time. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> yeah. So we're sideways? What the heck? Why? YG Fitness in the house too. Okay, I got to fix the orientation of this. Is it still sideways? Have to turn my photo. Okay, well then. Maybe, okay, now is it, is it right side up now? Okay. Yesterday. No, no, no. I'll I'll do it like this. Yesterday I had it like this and it wasn't an issue, but oh well. All good now. Okay, good. I'm gonna try to adjust. Okay, maybe I'll give it a few more minutes, guys. We'll let some more people attend. Okay. Now we are good. Go. There we go. The two of us now. A little bit crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna address this. So a couple more minutes, guys. We're gonna wait for a few more people to to get in. There we go. Brandon's on the computer for the Zoom peeps, and then. We got Instagram right there. Thanks for coming, guys. We'll get started shortly. All right. Again, guest is Griffin. We got Griffin here today. He's going to talk, do all the talk, barking <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's calmed down so much. Yeah. She's just like, <laughs> she knows what's up. <clears throat> so. Give it a couple more minutes. So, how was your day today, Brandon? We'll go. We'll do the daily banter. <laughs> What's new in the, in the Brandon's world? Same as every day. <laughs> You're writing a paper. Yeah, I finished up some papers right now. Um, so yeah. that's not exciting, but that's okay. At least there's no distractions. You mean it is exciting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least not, not. At least there's no distractions, which is good. That's true. All right, Zoom people. Yeah, hopefully you can hear us. So we're just gonna wait a few minutes. Yeah, we'll get a couple more minutes. Oh, yeah. we're losing people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> No, no, nobody else leave. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll get started. I guess we could get started and as people come in, we'll kind of, you get the shaft then if you just came in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> today's topic, today's Friday, right? I forget the days of the week because of this. <laughs> social uh, distancing, isolation, whatever you call it. Um, yeah, so today is the gastronemius muscle or soleus, the mm -hmm. complex, so the calf, the calf muscle. So these guys right there. Can't see the definition of my muscle because it probably isn't much there. <laughs> so um, we're going to cover this muscle today and go over its function and a little bit about rehab about it. So some easy ways to treat it and to take care of it. It's one that gets like a lot of runners. I'm sure there's a few runners on here uh, can cause quite a few issues around Brandon, and you run a lot. Did you have issues with your calf? Yeah, for sure. I'd say especially it's a common thing with uh, any dynamic sports and running and 
Um, we'll get to it why, why that's the case, but I think most people have had some sort of calf spasm or injury at some point. I think so. Career. And we can answer questions at the end too. Um, and today we'll try to, well, not speed it up, but we'll try to get to the, the nitty gritty. The meat of it. The meat of it, yeah, the meat <laughs> of the calf. It's a thick muscle too, holy. Um, I know the cadaver lab, seeing those for the first time, or like touching those for the first time, uh, was, was quite a bit of, I didn't think they were that thick and cross-sectional area, but very powerful muscles. So mm -hmm. we can go over a few things. We got some anatomy as well. So yeah, I guess we'll just get right into it. All right. <laughs> will you guys be saving? Yes, we will save it. Mike can, can watch it anytime. We'll have a link to it. So just message me, uh, direct message me and I'll send you the link. <clears throat> and I also have them saved on the computer. So if it's outside 24 hours, I can just do, um, what is it called? Dropbox. Dropbox. Yeah. I can Dropbox it um, or give you a, a USB or something like that. So we right. save each day. So if you ever need any day to anybody, you can let us know. So we're going to go over the gastrocnemius and soleus. Brandon's going to talk a little bit about it first with the anatomy lesson. Um, yeah, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to reposition this. <sighs> Okay, so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about anatomy here. Um, so as as Sunny said, uh, the gastrocnemius muscles um, are a complex of muscles, meaning they're made up of uh, a few different groups, three to be exact, right? Yes, correct. The three-headed muscle. Three-headed. Three-headed. That's muscle. what it says. It's known as. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> that saying. <laughs> so this is the nice big muscle, meaty block that you generally see on the outside. Um, that uh, you know most people definitional kind of set in there. So that's those big gastrocnemius muscles. Um, and those are kind of generally what we see on the outside there. So we cut off the layer, let's cut it. There we go. And then underneath, we can see that the more kind of flat muscle, um, it's an it's important complex too. Um, it's this guy right here. Uh, oops, can you do it? There we go. It's known as your soleus muscle. So that's kind of that next, uh, next, uh, layer of muscle as you kind of go a little bit thicker. Now, Sunny, and you can kind of talk to us a bit too, but it's almost, it's, it's as important as your gastrox mm -hmm. um, because it allows you to, um, of course, uh, bend your, your ankle when you have a bent knee. Yeah, um, it's an anatomically important because it allows you to still bend your ankle and get the power when your knee is bent there itself. Um, and then there's actually one more guy, I wonder if I can hit it here. Yeah, plantaris, or is it? Did I have it? I think you did. There we go. There, there it is. That's the, it's a, that's a little tiny, actually, muscle in your your um, your tricep serrae, which is your um, your your calf, and uh, that is a plantaris, which is actually also a calf muscle as well, technically. Yes, true. You can see how tiny that little guy is. Um, it would be pretty easy to hard to diagnose an injury in that by itself. Um, however, it's it is part of the the gap the gas or sorry the tricep tricep serrae muscle groups in the back there as well. Awesome. And then we got the Achilles tendon. Yeah, let's take a look at that guy. A thick, thick band. Uh, people probably heard of Achilles tendonitis, Achilles rupture, things like that. Um, so Brandon has the highlighted right there. So the the muscle groups form that Achilles tendon. So the, the um, gastroc and the soleus or soleus. So depending on who's, I like soleus, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they form that, that Achilles tendon. So a very thick band uh, due to the fact that it's a very powerful muscle group. So involved in running um, and everything like that. So yeah. Awesome. So there's that. That's probably the best way to go about that muscle group. We can probably talk about it for days. <laughs> All right, Zoom people will get you back to the camera here. I'm just gonna. Oh. So let's go back to this view. Okay, we're both back. Back again. All right, so that's the muscle group. So the action is, like Brandon said, is a plantar flexion of the ankle, right? So, and Brandon's doing a calf raise right there. People on Zoom can see this. My chucks. Uh, <laughs> oh, not the not the best lift. Actually, it's a good lifting shoe. But um, Brandon's gone to get Griffin. I can show you where Griffin's at. Oh, missed the view. There she is. 
There we go, got him back. He's using both muscle groups currently. <laughs> um, so the gastroc, very powerful muscle group. We rely on it quite a bit for running, jumping, quick changes in, in direction of movement. Uh, the soleus has the added function that it's a muscle pump. So it helps bring the blood back to the heart from the venous system. So venous system is pretty passive and it has the muscles that, that activate to get that blood back to the heart. Um, yeah, so if it's not functioning properly, you could have some swelling. Uh, yeah, and uh, anything else to add about that, Brandon? No, that's an important point, though. And a lot of times, you know, you probably read or, um, yeah, at least some knowledge of um, um, deep vein thrombosis that can form in, a, in gastric muscles. But like Sunny said, the mid, one of the major functions is a lymphatic and blood flow of that big gastrox complex. It's a, it's a huge function. Yeah, very important. So got to take care of it. That's why we get people to do foot and ankle pumps at the hospital to, to help with swelling or after surgery, going back and forth like that. Very common exercise. Um, if you're up and moving, then it's automatically acting like a pump. So you're, you're using those muscles when you're walking and, and obviously when you're running. So that's um, a couple of the actions or the main actions of those muscle groups. Um, in terms of injury, I'm sure a lot of people have had issues in this area. So um, me, I don't know, when I was running a couple of years ago, I've had tight calves, calf. Um, <laughs> so I had quite a few trigger point areas um, in that region and I can show you that actually. Yeah. I can show you some trigger points. Oh, I got my laptop as well. Not as fancy of a program as Brandon has, but I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna rotate this again. Oops. So yeah, here's some trigger points. Let's go to the soleus muscle. So you have a lot of the trigger points, common areas of pain when you have an issue with that muscle. Um, and that's demonstrated by all those red dots and, and the concentrated parts of those. Brandon's got it pulled up too for the zoom peeps. Yeah, give me one second here, <laughs> zoom people. So that's the trigger points or the referral patterns of the soleus muscle, a little bit different with the gastrox. The soleus is a little bit lower in terms of where you feel the pain. And you can also feel pain into the heel. And it often gets confused with plantar fasciitis or could be confused with plantar fasciitis. Absolutely. That's the importance of a, of a good orthopedic assessment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, for the most part, you do have pain in the calf and then it radiates into the, the heel, but some cases are a little bit different. So you don't want to mistake that. Well, I mean, you, not a bad thing if you mistake it as plantar fasciitis. It just might not get better in the rate that you want if you're if you're treating that specific issue. So you can see here the gastroc. Here's your trigger points, and then also your referral patterns of pain. So you can see it's pretty widespread, a little bit more than the soleus. Mm -hmm. And typically, I mean, with these images, uh, you have it a little bit higher up, closer to the um, origin. You get quite a bit of pain in the origin areas. So uncomfortable, regardless of which one you injure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Brandon, have you had any of those injuries for your running career? I think it's just some, some minor strains, and especially um, especially on long, long runs. I've definitely had where the muscles have totally uh, stopped with their anaerobic process and started breaking down glycogen, and and they uh, yeah get into the more of that cramping feeling. So yeah, absolutely, have had that that, that sounds sensation there. That sounds rough. <laughs> Gosh. Um, so strains, common symptoms of strains, like Brandon said, is you do have pain, burning type of pain. Um, could feel kind of like a pulling type of type of pain as well. And in that region of that calf, so kind of where the trigger points, the image I showed you, you kind of have it right in the back here. You can go down the leg a little bit. Everyone's a little bit different. So sometimes you do have radiation patterns that are a little bit different from the norm, but Typically it starts in that calf area, somewhere in that calf area, and then it can radiate up a little bit, up the leg or down into the heel. So the biggest thing to do is when you have those issues is to discontinue the activity that's causing the issue. So if you're running quite frequently, um, you get a bit of pain in the calf, a little bit's okay, like a two, three out of 10, keep going. If it starts increasing, then obviously stop that activity, rest a little bit and then try to run again. And if it still hurts, then you're kind of, you're done for a bit, right? So <laughs> you don't want to force things too much because then you might be off the activity longer than you want. Like we discussed yesterday and the day before that, 
we like to keep people in the activity that they're interested in. So we don't want to have patients or clients discontinue activity. We want to catch it before it gets to that point and still like you're probably get cranky if you can't run for a few days in the summer, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But just like doesn't mean you can't switch it up to a bike or, or something that's not weight bearing to our swimming that gets a nice anaerobic effect still, right? Switch it up. Yeah. So that gastroc or soleus strain can happen in, in a variety of sports. Anything that requires a lot of running, jumping, changes in direction, which is quite a few sports. Um, and the, the biggest thing is to know, hey, I need to stop the activity or if it's not too bad, stretch and roll it out and then get back into that activity. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's also Achilles tendonitis, which we'll talk about as well. Um, and also quite a few challenges that I've seen with that. Yeah. So Achilles tendonitis and we just on the anatomy app, we kind of talked about that, that thick, big tendon in the, the back of your, your heel there. Um, so tendonitis, I know we talked about early in the week for appealer conditions, but inflammation on the tendon itself. Um, since um, humans are bipedal and we generally walk on our feet all day, <laughs> That's um, word. It's, it's pretty hard for us to avoid not taking steps and activating that tendon there itself. Um, so with the tendonitis, it's an inflammation process. Um, so sometimes we need to break that inflammation process first, um, usually due to that micro tearing in it, um, and then start to build up the strength around that uh, Achilles tendon there as well. But you're right, it sometimes can be a super frustrating process. Yeah. Uh, Achilles tendonitis, um, patellar tendonitis, a lot of these big muscle tendonitis can be a pain in the butt <laughs> sometimes. Pain in the heel. <laughs> yeah, pain in the heel. <laughs> yeah, then with tendonitis, since it's, such a sorry tendonitis tendonitis <laughs> size uh <laughs> it's uh it can be a, a frequent issue so even with with the gastroc achilles area uh, the biggest indicator of injury is injury prior to that fact so if you had an injury previous uh previously then you're, you're more likely to have that injury again so that's why gastroc strains for instance are so can be so common with 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 individuals i think i've treated the same person a few times, uh, more than a few times for, for the same type of injury. Um, so the biggest thing is to realize what's going on and then to have an action plan for it. Because yes, we want to eliminate injury, but we also want to teach patients and clients about how, what to do when they're re-injured. So mm -hmm. that way you save visits to a physio and you get better quicker. So you're, you're off activity less, you can get back to what you like doing. And that's, that's our goal is to get people active and love what they do. Mm -hmm. and love doing it so with exercises we'll show a few and again if it's a serious strain then you don't want to stretch it too, too aggressively that wouldn't be good um, and especially if you have bruising and things like that you want to be a bit careful to get some ice on it so the other thing with the strain is more significant strains have some swelling and bruising as well so you got to watch out for that you'll have bruises in, in, in the back of the leg here um, I've seen a wide range from the whole muscle to just a little bit of it um, and then you can also, well, Achilles rupture, you'll probably know when that happens. <laughs> yeah. You, you'll be hobbling a bit. So, um, um, that's something that can happen if you're chronically injured this area or you, you have it, um, you get too aggressive with that activity. So if you injure it and then go right back to sport and get really aggressive, then you're more likely to have a rupture. So not to scare anybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you got to watch out for those things. And, and that's, that's where body awareness comes in so much that we talk about body awareness is just to to know that you have an injury and then you kind of know exactly what you should do about it so kind of being your own physio at home let me just get the screen here we got some more people so and you guys can ask questions as as we go through this again today won't be as long as the other days we don't want to bore you with a 15 minute presentation <laughs> <laughs> i thought about the other day I couldn't, I, I would not be able to sit in a class anymore. I don't think, <laughs> I think I'd, I'd fall asleep right away. Since Brandon's got Griffin in his hands, I'll show you some of the stretches. Here. Yeah, actually I'll show a wall stretch first. I'll okay. do that. Oh, you'll and, do that. And then uh, I'm okay with zoom that. people this way on second. I'm going to change my camera to the wall. Oops. Brandon just... There we go. There we go. Awesome. There we go. Awesome. There it is. Okay. So yeah, Zoom people and Instagram people, we can take a look here. So generally, uh, we talked about the two different muscle groups with the, the gastrox complex. Um, so for the big gastrox muscles on the outside first, um, the back leg is the leg I'm stretching. 
generally you want no bend in your knee. You want your heel glued to the ground. You kind of want that nice stretch into the wall, okay? Passive hold. These guys are good, 45 seconds to a minute and a half. Just a nice kind of hold. Nice thing about these, you can kind of do them throughout the day, uh, which is uh, nice as a little bit of a setup there. <laughs> Sorry, Griffin was eating something off the ground. <laughs> um, the other group, uh, your bent knee. Now we talked about the soleus muscles are most active when your knee is bent. So therefore to stretch it, heel still stays on the ground, but you're going to bring that knee into the wall, get that nice stretch through the complex, the front leg is bone stretching, uh, get the soleus in this particular foot here. Yeah, awesome. Hopefully that looked okay there. Perfect. I think so. So doing that, about three repetitions, 30 seconds to a minute hold. Um, and especially before you're active, you want to be able to do those, those stretches. So doing both would be a good idea. Um, see where you feel it the most. That's what you should be doing. So bend the knee as much as you need to and really get to the point where if you're already sore, try to try to feel it in that area. You want the, That's what I mean by feel it where you need it. It's kind of feeling it where, where your injury is, but not too much. You don't want that. Another way to do it would be to use a belt. See, so if my foot and ankle right here, so what I'm going to do is, and you can use any belt, it doesn't have to be one of these fancy mulligan belts. You put your loop around your foot and then you just kind of bring your ankle up as far as you can go until you feel a bit of a stretch. So I got a bit of a stretch here, hold for 30 seconds, relax, 30 seconds, relax, 30 seconds, and then switch side. Or you could alternate between one or the other. That's another good way to stretch your gastroc. You can also twist your ankle in a little bit and target different fibers of the gastroc muscle as well. So turning in or out and localizing to where you get a bit of that stiffness. So for athletes, runners, whoever it is, try those out before and after activity. Not a bad idea. Like yesterday, we had a discussion of when to stretch, when to roll out. Um, and a lot of it is just whenever you feel like you need it. So it doesn't have to be before, well, it should be before activity, but a lot of people who are very active ask, hey, like if I roll out in between my sport or activity, would it be detrimental to performance? And it would not be. Um, but I'd say just try it out and see how your body tolerates it. Yeah, that's, an, that's, that's a few ways to stretch that muscle group. Another thing you could do is grab a foam roller, which I'm sure everyone has used at one point or the other, and roll out that muscle group. So what you do is, and we'll do it in a second, we'll grab a, a roller. And the best way to do it is, is to hold it where you find some soreness. So Brandon's going to be right behind you. you can, See him clearly. There we go. And then for the Zoom people, I'm going to slide over and hold the computer like that. So there we go. Brandon has both of his calves, calf, calves on the foam roller. And you could do both at once or you could do one at a time. You could twist the leg in and out a little bit and really localize to where you need it. Because you have oh, different, <laughs> oh, oh mama. <laughs> You have different heads of the, the muscle, right? So you have two different, you have three different muscles, I guess you could say. Um, so you can localize the, the certain area that is a problem area for you. So what you would do is you would roll out, roll into the pain, hold for 30 seconds to a minute, let the pain go away and move on to the next spot. So not too, too difficult to do. Well, I guess it is difficult because you got to recreate a little bit of pain. Yeah. And if, um, <laughs> if you don't have a roller on like a baseball or a... Yeah. Tennis ball works, Small ball, works yeah. a little good there. Same idea with these guys, right? No different than a foam roller, just trigger point. Get into the area. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, this was for <laughs> maximal pain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're not getting enough out of the roller and need a smaller surface area or object with a smaller surface area, this is a great way to roll out. Really good I use this for my hip flexor, for my calf. That would uh, be excruciating, but <laughs> <laughs> for me though, for me though. Mine are pretty tight, so I get a lot of stiffness. Like when I'm tired and squatting, that's when I usually get tight calves. Calf. <laughs> Controversy over what they call it. Gastro. 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 Um, any questions so far, guys? You can type them out whenever you like. 
All right, we'll move on, I guess. Another exercise you can do is doing heel raises. So doing single leg or, or double leg heel raises. We'll have to orientate this a little bit this way. So Brandon's gonna do it right here. So there's Brandon and zoom. There we go. Holding both devices at once. <laughs> So Brandon's playing it safe here. He's got a bit of hand support with the roller. Yeah. At home, probably a railing would be a bit more stable. Yeah. So what he's doing is just going up and down on his on his heel. So his heel's lifting up, coming down. What you could do is if you want an eccentric contraction, you can lower down slower than going up. Good. Three sets of 10, three sets of seven, whatever feels comfortable. What you could do to make it even harder is to do it on one leg. So Let's say if his left leg is injured and he wants to work on that a little bit more, he's doing the eccentric loading there. And then down. What's what's the other benefit, Sonny, with uh, single leg? Balance, proprioception. proprioception. Yeah, yeah, there you go, proprioception. I'm glad I got that one right. Double bang for your buck. <laughs> yes, so you get proprioception, so knowing where your body is in space, working on balance, that's often missed out. We've got Oh yeah, one person, I'll be trying these for sure. Let us know how it goes. Try it right away. Take a picture of yourself or a video and tag us in it. Yeah, and we'd like to add it to our story. Look at this superior. Yeah, I guess need to do it with uh, work on top of it. There you go. And then what you could also do is do it on a stair. So if we have a small step, which we don't want to, you probably want to wedge it underneath that rig because it'll probably flip over. That's okay. Okay, let me flip over. A stair. So pretend that's a step at home. So everyone's got stairs at home. This one's a bit unstable just because it's a small block. So what Brandon's gonna do is kind of lift up and come back down, lift up, come back down. So this would be another progression you could do. If it's easy to do on the surface, on a flat surface, on one leg, then bump it up to a step. <clears throat> there we go. Easy peasy. There we go. Going back to my mug. Oh, oh, I'm getting lots of gray hairs everywhere. <laughs> so, um, and if you wanted to, like lunges are good to do, squats are good to do. I can demonstrate um, some front squats as well. A good exercise to do, you're loaded. Front squat, your load's a little bit more forward. So you do challenge the gastro complex a little bit more with, with a front squat over a back squat. Um, I like squats. I always see it with so, the... Let's see it with the live... I could do it with a barbell, I guess. Yeah, or why don't we so we can do it over here? Oh, yes, 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 I could do that. Right. Plus, I don't want to use barbell because that means I have to lift more weight. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, what you do is you come to a rack, or even if you're at home, like you don't have to, you could use body weight. So what you do is you put the bar up kind of on your clavicle, on your collarbone, and the idea is feet shoulder width apart, you can have them rot you can have the feet rotated a little bit out and then coming down all the way and then back up. My heels lifted up a little bit. That's okay. And down and up like that. Just like that. So after enough, you'll feel a little bit of burn in your calves. If you want a little bit more load, you could uh, add some weight to it. So if you do have access to those bits of equipment like a barbell and and some weights then you can you can do some weighted front squats we've got some more people that have joined so any questions about anything we said i know today was a little bit quicker than the other day but any questions brandon's gone to grab his dog griffin anyone on zoom with any questions you can type them out too I know yesterday we covered the shoulder, had quite a few questions about shoulder rehab, which <laughs> um, is fair because it's a pretty complex area. Not to say this area is not very complex, but a lot of it is activity modification. So actually I've got a, a question that I'll think of myself and then we'll answer it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty biased, but that's okay. Return to running. That's often a question I get for anybody with a lower extremity injury is when do I go back to running? That's a good question. Oh my God. I'm not, I mean, I do run a little bit. Uh, Brandon's a little bit more of an avid runner. 
What is fair in terms of repetition until failure? Um, with the squats, I would do like three sets of seven. That's probably fair to do, especially if it's your first time. If you, if you haven't done squats too much, um, then I would recommend doing it for three sets of, let's say three sets of seven to start with. If you go until failure with this one, um, what is it called? AMRAP, as many reps as possible. Oh, yeah. You're going to feel it real bad. <laughs> Especially your caps, they're yeah. gonna be you're, seized you're, right up. You're yeah. gonna be fired up. So if you're doing it to begin with, I just say in general, it's three sets of seven. Let's leave it at that. Let's make it simple. Um, and then yeah, the other thing to think about too, if you are doing eccentric, when we talked about these eccentric kill raises, um, remember eccentric fatigues things like way faster. Um, and um, just be careful. You know, when I say be careful, just meaning that you might have to adjust your repetitions to less than expected because um, those will fatigue the heck out of those caps and you'll be quite sore the next day if you yeah. over dive in those oh gosh <laughs> you don't want that stairs everything will be painful yeah. which you know that's good don't enough. want that when you're injured or <laughs> if you're sitting at home exactly um no problem thank you for the good question so back to the return to running that i asked <laughs> which i know some people wanted to know about too but they're too afraid to put up their hand <laughs> um i always tell people okay like if you get injured you're going to take it easy for a couple of days and then you're going to go back to walking. If you can do a walk at a decent pace, so a little bit of a quick pace, and it's not painful, then I would say try jogging at a slow pace. Um, if walking itself is going to hurt, you can only imagine what running is going to do. So even jogging, because um, I looked at a lot of research. One of my uh, practicum projects when I was a student way back was to try to find a return to running program for one of the athletes I was working with. And I wanted to back it up with research as we like doing a lot of that. <laughs> you more than I. Um, so the only thing I found consistently was interval training. As much as people <laughs> hate interval training, that's the safest way to increase or get back into running. So let's say if you can walk without pain, I would do like a one to one ratio of jogging to walking. So one minute run, one minute jog, do that one day. If the next day you wake up and everything's fine, you don't feel anything, then increase that interval, maybe two minute run or jog to a one minute walk. Um, and then nothing there, then go three to one. And then Kate, you get some pain in the calf area there. Then you would just stick to that ratio until the pain goes away. So never increase the same day because then that's when you'll, you know, kind of pay for it the next day. So, and then after you get to like a five to one, just kind of run for 10 minutes, see how it goes depending on your running frequency or, or how a bit of a runner you are. If you've been doing it for a long time, then again, you'll know your body a little bit better. Uh, but if you're new to it, everything's going to be sore. Yeah. Like me yesterday, I ran very <laughs> short distance and, and then oof. remember there's two things to factor in when you run as well. Um, remember there's pace. So generally how quickly you can run over a kilometer for, um, and then remember there's also general distance. Those are two kind of factors you think about when you do a run. Um, so when you are gearing back into a run, usually I get with my athletes, don't care about your pace. If it's like super slow, don't worry about it. Um, when you're doing those intervals, because it doesn't really matter. And instead of having like a set distance, um, you can do that. Have maybe a set time for like that week where you're rehabbing the injury, um, whether when you are doing that interval type training as well. So those are two factors just to kind of take off the board. Yeah, you're trying to rehab that injury anyways. That's a good point to mention. I mean, just go with all those things, right? We got a lot of education there about running because this is an area that running is, is, a, is a major concern with when you, when you get injured. And that's with any sport. I mean, lots of sports involve running to some extent. Um, so you just got to listen to your body, try the rolling, stretching. It needs a good warm up, right? So if you go from inside your house in the winter and just start running hard outside, you might be more, you when you'd be more likely to have a strain. So I, I find strains for the large part are preventable because you could stretch it, warm it up, you know, do a light jog or, or a walk before just sprinting, um, even ride a bike. If you have access to that, warm up the joints, warm up the muscles a bit, uh, can be very beneficial. <clears throat> so I have a question for you, Sonny. Oh gosh. To, to push things along. Oh. I always think people might be interested. So what's, uh, what's the difference between like a strain, mm -hmm. pain and a cap? Well, strain pain would be more of, a, of an injury, so an active inflammatory yeah. response, right? So good question. <laughs> Another good question. I'm always worried that it's like I might not be able to answer it. <laughs> so you have strain, which is an active inflammatory response, whereas a cramp or a spasm would just be a tight, like a hypertonic area, like a very tight area of the muscle. So where the muscle fibers are overlapping a little bit more, 
that needs to be released. And the big thing is you're going to have a lot more um, faster improvement in symptoms with a, with a spasm or a cramp. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think most people have probably experienced a spasm or a cramp like in the middle of the night or you're sitting watching TV and after a heavy day of exercise, it, it cramps up real quick. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a common thing that people generally do feel. But remember, it doesn't really associate with tissue damage. That's what Sunny was kind of getting at. Um, most of the time, it's it's a problem with um, blood flow or oxygenation or uh, um, yeah, blood flow or oxygenation getting to the blood. Yeah. Or sorry, to the muscle there itself. Yeah, I find a lot of people if they're dehydrated, they can get a lot of cramps. Exactly. Yeah. I think the gastroc is the most commonly cramped muscle as well. I think I was reading a statistic on rates of cramps yeah. in certain muscles. So. And, um, yeah, and bringing on that too, remember, if, as far as dehydration goes, remember there's generally four uh, electrolytes other than water that are important. Let's see if Sunny knows them. Electrolytes? Four electrolytes. Sodium potassium. Sodium, 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 potassium. Sodium, sodium, potassium. What else is there? Magnesium. Magnesium. Sodium, potassium. And calcium. Yes, yeah, calcium. Yes, there you go. Oh, oh. Perfect. Yeah, so it's getting hot. Remember all four of those, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium. Um, those are, are important electrolytes. A lot of those like mini tabs you can buy um, to put in your water um, they are pretty good. Um, actually, Gatorade it's not very good. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's usually too much of that. Uh oh, oh, um, there we go. Yeah. So, anyways, keep in mind if, if uh, as far as calf cramps, sometimes this is due to electrolytes kind of being out of whack, especially if you're doing a lot of training. Yeah, that's a good point. Got to stay hydrated and get the right nutrients in the body, um, especially if you're training. You need to. If you ramp up training, then you got to adjust the diet accordingly too, and rest too. Recovery is an important thing. Um, whether you like ice baths or hot baths, whatever works for your body. Rolling out, I find at the end of the day after a heavy workout or a long workout to, to roll out nicely and get things loose. Prevents cramping. And if you get a cramp, just dig something in that, that muscle, right? <laughs> Gently <laughs> put <Gently>. something in. <laughs> People might take that out. Could just Gently. stab something in there. Oh, looks like a oh, that's a good long question. Oh my gosh. Too long. Sorry, Brooke. No. <laughs> um, what are some common deficits you see in patients that develop Achilles tendinopathy? Is it typically weakness, mobility impairment, or training overload? Uh, for tendinopathy, mechanism of injury, typically I've seen more training overload. Like just, um, it wasn't like one specific incident that caused it. It, it, was, it was a large volume of training. Or something. Just ramped things up and then they started developing issues. That's what I've seen. I hope they answered that right. And then, or, or is it typical weakness, mobility, impairment? Oh, sorry, how it happens. Okay. Deficits. I, typical weakness, mobility, impairment, or training overload. Well, I mean, even training overload can, can overlap into weakness. So if you don't have the endurance and then increased training, then that's going to cause some issues. So, I mean, the majority of people that I've seen with this issue would be some sort of change in activity. They ramped up running or their sport and they develop this issue over time. Mm -hmm. They'll notice a little bit of burning in the back of the heel and then it'll progress and kind of like those small issues you have like, oh, it's only one or two out of 10, don't worry about it. And then four months later, it's, you can't do your activity. So if you let it go for too long, that's gonna happen. Um, so a lot of the times I find people with, with that injury are, are a bit weak in that area. They're not conditioned in that area specifically. So if you do too much of one thing, it's not a good thing. So if you, if you just run <clears throat> and that's it, you could develop some issues. If you do some sort of conditioning in between, so some sort of strength training, doesn't mean heavy weights. Um, every time I say strength, people think it's like until <laughs> failure and, you know, <laughs> doing squats until you just fall on the ground, but you need to do a little bit of resistance training. Um, or plyometric or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Plyometrics for runners might be a bit better because you don't need much equipment and, and resistance. Yeah. It could be could be fun too. I like doing it <laughs> when it doesn't hurt. So yeah. never. Um, yeah, so doing those kind of activities would be good. So I think it's usually a conditioning issue. There's a bit of uh, a lack of strength and endurance um, and then ramping up training. Now it's going to put way more demand on the muscle that already has some deficits and then you get you get injured, you get in, in, inflammation. So does that yeah. satisfy you as well? Yeah, Brandon, do you have anything else to answer? Um, hopefully that answers the question, Brooke. You are a physio too, so you know, didn't have to answer that, but it's a good question. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Uh, <laughs> 
Anybody else on Zoom that have a question or on Instagram? Always available um, outside of these live presentations too. So you can email at Sunny or Brandon or info at pursuitemotion.com or you could send me a direct message on Instagram, which a lot of people are doing, which is awesome. I like answering questions and then helping out where, where I can or where we can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so either one of those avenues, Facebook as well. Uh, I know Instagram's probably a little bit more popular with us <laughs> than, than Facebook, but I get to all the messages. I still have sit at the front desk, even though we're closed to the public. Um, we do tell a rehab too. So if anybody wanted to book an appointment, we can set that up over uh, a few different platforms. And it's something that we can offer direct patient care. So we can still do our self-management, our education, um, and our therapeutic or home exercise program. So you can still get the same quality of physiotherapy care, just to provide it in a different platform or vessel. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to know that because this is somewhat the future of the profession. It just had to be expedited a little bit this crisis caused things to, to move a bit quicker, but I think that's really good for the public because it gives, look at the access you can get now, as long as you have an internet connection, you can you can see a physio. Exactly. Yes, some cases we still need to, like emergent cases, let's say if you rupture your ACL, then it's always a good idea to, to go see somebody to get some help. Um, but I think it's a good thing. And I think it's gonna be a huge benefit to you guys, to the public. Um, and I'm pretty excited. I've had a few treatments and it was, it was a lot of fun. So I, I felt, you know, a large part of my identity is being a physio. So when I can't treat patients due to this pandemic, um, it gets a bit stressful. So um, that kind of brought the physio back into me. So I felt even after these videos, I get pretty jacked up. It takes Brandon like 40 minutes to calm me down. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Griffin can today. Yeah. Um, so I think that's important. And then even you know, keep up with your mental health. I know a lot of people are are at home, either working from home or, or not working at all. So you have to keep up with your mental health. It's an important topic. I know one of my, 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 my master, my mentor is gonna have a, a conversation about that with a few other of his colleagues on the CPA. I think on the CPA private division Instagram, you can check it out. So there's any physios listening or students, new graduates, whatever it is. CPA private division, if you go to their Instagram page, uh, you can go on their first or their latest story, or sorry, latest uh, post, and it will have a link to, to check out that on Zoom to how to deal with mental health during this because clinic owners can't, work, can't <laughs> make enough money. Uh, physios aren't, aren't, um, aren't working as well. So people are impacted financially, emotionally. There's a lot of things going on. So make sure you guys take care of yourselves too. Yeah. And then uh, we'll give you guys a quick dopamine boost here. Yeah. Can you say hi? There we go. Hi, oh, cute. You. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Brandon said dude, this is going to get us 10,000 followers. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a dog to bring to. But, yeah. Any questions? Sorry for whoever, the few people that just came on. Uh, there is a link, so if you do shoot me an email um, or either on Instagram, just send a message and I can just send you a link. This is all recorded. Um, each, each one is recorded, so I can send you a link for it. I'll give you one more minute, everyone, to ask any questions you like. What are your plans for the weekend, Brandon? Uh, to write. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Make a PowerPoint presentation. Even better. Wow, that's yeah. exciting. That's my life this weekend. That's exciting. <laughs> that's very exciting. Maybe, uh, yeah, whoever's on still to think about as well. Maybe some topics for next week. Uh, yeah. And especially if you're your students or practicing physios, uh, maybe there's something specific you guys want to be interested in as far as a, um, a PT, uh, or PT specific type um, talk we can do, whether it's research or uh, um, even some sort of mentoring type thing. Uh, let us know as well. We're, we're open to ideas. Yeah, we can uh, spread the word around the university and we can do another group as well um, and discuss, yeah, whatever you guys want to learn more about. I was thinking next week, 
I had some feedback. Uh, one individual said knee issues. Um, there was another one that said hip flexor strengthening. And one individual that talked about uh, expanding more on rounded shoulders and things like that. So it gives us a few topics. I think it'd also be a good idea if we all go through our specialty. So I treat a lot of TMD issues and headaches. Um, Rob, uh, one of the other physios here, does a lot of great vestibular rehab. And then Brandon, you can name his stuff since he's right here. Uh, I'm interested in a lot of pain management, uh, chronic pain type stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, those are all good stuff that we can talk about. So we'll make a we'll make a schedule. I'll make sure we put it in the stories each day, and that way you can see which days you want to attend or if you want to attend them all. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all, all right, we guys. got, guys. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend, everybody. Sorry, there's gonna be no posts, uh, no, no videos on the weekend. So I'm sorry. That's gonna thought I'd let you guys down gently. <laughs>